today we're going to talk about the um, about density curves and we're going to get an intro into the normal distribution which is going to become our most important distribution and we're going to talk about it from now until May. Um, everything that we do second semester is based on this normal distribution. So just a little intro to remind you, we had this conversation in Chapter 7 about what a density curve is. And I just want to remind you that a density curve uh, models a distribution. And it has two requirements. One, it's above the x-axis or the independent axis, and two, um, the area between the curve and the x-axis is one unit squared, or what we're going to do is transform it into 100%. So let's look at just a problem really quickly from Chapter 7. Um, I have a density curve over here, and I want to verify that it's a density curve. Number one, it is above the x-axis. So I'm just going to check that off, pat myself on the back. Two, I'm going to check the area. The area is uh, base times height. Four times a fourth is one unit squared, or again, we're going to call it one or a hundred percent. And so if I wanted to figure out this right here, just a reminder that um, the first thing that I would expect from you is I would expect for you to sketch a picture. And this should be labeled, so I'll put my four and I'll put a one-fourth. And then I would expect to see the numbers that we're interested in, so the 2.7 and the 3.2. I want in between, so I would expect to see something that is shaded in like that. And then if I want to find the area, the distance from 2.7 to 3.2 is 0.5 or 1 half times the height, which is 1 fourth. So it looks like this probability is 1 eighth. And I'm just going to leave it like that, but if you want to change it into a decimal, that is fine with me. Um, and so one more last problem before we go on, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 3.9. Remember, that's going to be the same as this probability because the probability that x equals any number in a continuous uh, distribution is 0, and that's from Chapter 7. So you might want to go back and make sure that you know why. Again, I would expect to see a picture. And I would expect for it to have appropriate labels on it. I would expect to see the 3.9. Notice I just put the 3.9 on the left-hand side. It's not drawn to scale. That's fine. Just put it on the appropriate side. Shade it. So let's see. The distance from 3.9 to 4 is 1 tenth. And the height is 1 fourth. So this area or this probability is 1 fortieth. Okay, so let's talk about something way more important. You should be able to do these density curves, rectangles, triangles, trapezoids. These are the easy ones. The way more important one to us is the normal distribution. And so I want to talk for a second about the normal distribution and about the empirical rule. So um, the normal distribution, this is your shorthand for writing it. Um, mu is the population mean. Um, X bar is the sample mean. Sigma is the population standard deviation. Guess what S is? It's the sample standard deviation. So just some notation. You should know that from now and uh, forever. Okay, so a normal distribution is sometimes called a um, bell-shaped curve. We're going to call it a normal distribution, though. Um, it looks like this. It is symmetric. No matter how awful my drawing is, it is symmetric. Um, it is above the x-axis. Ooh, that's bad. Okay, it is above the x-axis. Uh, 
And I know it doesn't look like it, but it is actually symmetric on both sides. Um, it's actually an asymptotic function. So it gets closer and closer to the x-axis as you go to positive and negative infinity. The area is still 1, though. So you calc two students. Um, I could integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity of this function, and I would uh, get an area of 1. In the middle of this distribution is the mean. So there is the mean right there. The standard deviation only has meaning in the normal distribution. We can talk about standard deviation of something that's not normal, but it has it doesn't have the magical meaning that it does in a normal distribution. So in a normal distribution, what happens is when I'm at the mean, I can go out one standard deviation on either side. So this is the mean minus one standard deviation, and this is the mean plus one standard deviation. This area right here is going to be, so this area right here is going to be 68% or 0.68. So if you go out one standard deviation on either side of the mean, you get 68% of the data. And that's why the standard deviation has special meaning in the normal distribution. Because if we know what the standard deviation is, then we can go up and down and find a very specific percentage no matter what. It doesn't matter what the mean is. It doesn't matter what the standard deviation is. If you go up one standard deviation and down one standard deviation, you have 68% of the data. Um, if you want to go even further than that, so if you want to go the mean plus two standard deviations and the mean minus two standard deviations, if you look at this area right here, what you're going to do is you are going to get 95% of the data or 95% um, of the observations or a probability of 95%. And then finally, if you want to go out three standard deviations, so three standard deviations. Again, my drawing is not that great, so these are symmetric. If you want to go out three standard deviations, so all this area right in here, all the way here, you get 99.7 percent of the data. So most of the data for anything that's normal is within three standard deviations. That means that 0 0.003 or 0.3 percent of the data is outside of three standard deviations. This can be applied to anything. This can be applied to intelligence scores. There's a mean intelligence score. Some people do better. Some people do worse. But only 0.3 percent of the population is in that upper upper area or that lower lower area. Height is something else that's normally distributed. Most men or women have an average mean height and if you go out one standard deviation you should get 68 percent of males, 68 percent of females, um, and so on like that. And then you get some people who are extremely tall and some people who are extremely short on um, either end of this. Okay, so how does this affect us? So we want to look at an example problem. So we have uh, weights of uh, potato chips. And we know that even though the package says that it's 9 ounces, that sometimes the machine fills it up more or less. And so we have a mean of 9.12 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.15 ounces. So if I want to use correct notation, I'm going to use the N. The mean comes first, comma, the standard deviation. Okay, so now I actually want to answer a question. What's the probability that a randomly chosen bag of chips weighs more than uh, 9.42? So, first thing I'm going to expect from you is some notation. I want to know the probability that x is greater than 9.42. Second thing I want from you is a shaded picture. Since this is normally distributed, I'm going to draw a normal distribution. And I'm going to label 9.12 in the middle. I'm going to label 9.42 over here. 
I want greater than, so I'm going to shade this. Remember, it's asymptotic, so it actually does keep going up. Um, and then I'm going to have to do some detective work. I'll have a better way to do it soon, but right now I'm going to need to do some detective work. So what I know is I know that this distance right here is 0.3. Since the standard deviation is 0.15, um, this observation must be mu plus two standard deviations. All right, do we agree with that? So what was our two standard deviations? So our two standard deviations was 95%. So what we know is we know that if we also go an equal amount this side, that on both those sides we have 95%. So that means that this red area right here must be half of 95%. So that red area right there must be 47.5%. Um, since this is symmetric, the whole right-hand side is 50%. So in order to get the probability that we want, we're going to take 0.5, we're going to multiply, point, uh, sorry, subtract 0.475, and that should leave us with a probability of 0.025, or 2.5%. So the probability that we would randomly choose a bag that weighed more than 9.42 is about 2.5%. And if all that was clear, great. If it wasn't, you may need to rewind and uh, listen to it again to get the logic of where the 2.5% came from. OK, so next question. We want to know the percentile of 8.97. So I'm going to draw a little picture here. I'm going to label this as my 9.12. And I'm just going to label this as an 8.97. 97 right there. I'm not looking for an area, I'm just looking for the percentile. This is obviously less than the 50th percentile because it's closer to the bottom of the distribution. So what is this distance right here? Well this distance looks like it is 15. So that's one standard deviation right there. And remember that if I go out one standard deviation on both sides, I have 68% of the data. So this side must be 34%. Since on the left-hand side I have half of the data, um, that means that I have to have 16% right here. Because 16% and 34% would give me 50%. So this must be at the 16th percentile. Again, if you understood that, great. If you didn't, then you may need to rewind and listen to my logic again. All right, last problem. Um, randomly chosen between 8.67 and 9.27. So I'm going to use some notation because I'm being asked about probability again. 8.67 is less than x is less than 9.27. So what I'd like for you to do right now is pause me and try to find this probability on your own. Remember, draw a picture, shade it, find the probability. So pause me. Okay, so I got my probability ugh, probability to be around 84%. Um, I figured out that on the right-hand side, I was only one standard deviation away, which was an easy calculation of um, just an area of 34% because it was half of the 68% because I was only on one side. My other side on the left hand side, not drawn to scale because I'm three standard deviations away, so this actually should be much further this way, but that's okay. Um, and so what I had to do is I knew that if I went out three standard deviations that um, I would be 997 on either side, so I split that in half. Um, 
so that I knew on the left half side I was at 49.85. I added my two areas together and I got 84%. Um, now the empirical rule is just an approximation, it's not exact. So if you went about it a different method than I do, you might be slightly off from my 83.85. You should be close to 84%. Though, 